Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to iterate through all an array's items using a loop. Sometimes when working with arrays, it's very handy to be able to iterate through each item to find one or more elements that we might need or to manipulate an array based on which data item meet a certain set of criteria. JavaScript offers several built-in methods that each iterate over arrays in slightly different ways to achieve different results. Uh, examples are every, uh, for each, and map. However, the technique which is most flexible and offers the greatest amount of control is a simple for loop. So consider the following. We have a function called greater than 10, and then it's being passed in an argument of an array. Inside of the function, we're creating a new variable called a new array, and then inside of that, we're creating a loop where we begin at zero, we go to the length of the array, which is the one that's being passed in. So if it's an array with three elements in here, this will be we're going to go until it hits three. And then with each one, we're going to increment by one. And if the array at i is greater than 10, then we add that. So what we're going to go through. So if the array at position here is two, it's less than 10. So it's not going to be pushed. And then the loop will recycle again. And then it'll be 12. The 12 is greater than 10. That's true. So our new array is pushed on. And so our new array. Um, and then at the end of the function, we return the array. So greater than 10, and you uh, push and you push in this array as a parameter, we're going to get 12, 14, and 80, because those are all the numbers that are greater than 10. So this is just going to say that again. Using a for loop, this function iterates through the access and accesses each element of the array and, s and subjects it to a simple test that we have created. The simple test is that if it's greater than 10. In this way, we have easily and programmatically determined which data items are greater than 10 and returned a new array containing those items. So we've defined a function filtered array. Here we got filtered array, which takes in an array and an, a nested array and an element as an argument and returns a new array. Elm represents an element that may or may not be present on one or more of the array of the arrays nested within array. Modify the function for a f using a for loop to return a filtered version of the past array such that any array nested within array containing the element has been removed. Okay, so um, <clears throat> in this one, they have, we're passing in an array. The filtered array is getting passed in. We've got an element with uh, 323, 163, uh, 323, 163, 313. And this one should return nothing. It should return an empty array because there is no number three here. Whereas here, um, 18, it should return. Okay, so it's returning, it's adding anything that doesn't have an 18 in it. So because this one has an 18, it's not adding it there. Here, we've got a three and then there's a three in this one, there's a three in this one, there's a three in this one, and there's a three in this one. Therefore, we return an empty array. Um, cool. So, first off, we want to create a loop, right? Um, <clears throat> so we go for, uh, we're going to let i equal zero. So we're creating an index at zero. And we're going to say i is less than the array dot length, which means in this example, it would be one, two, three, because of this. Oh, sorry. Not three. This one has one, two, three, four. And so we're going to say array dot lang t8. And then, and then we're going to say i plus equals one. That's just the way I like to do it. They also use this plus plus signal symbol. This is the same. And so within here, what we want to do is say, if the array at point of index, now, um, so for the first one, we're going to say, if the array at point of index, so if that will give us this index back. So if we say dot index of, and the element, the element, is um, not equal to negative one, meaning if the index contains that, no, let's say equals to negative one. So that means like, so if this, 
has a position. Okay, so negative one would mean that the three is not here, but the three is here, so we would return uh, zero, one, two. We would return two here. And so because it's not, because it's, it's equal to two, it's not equal to one. And therefore we can say the new array dot push the array at i. And so, yeah, um, this example returns an empty array like we planned. So here we're calling the function and we've got three, two, three, one, six, three, three, and 26. So we're, we're passing this test right now. Um, the filtered array should utilize a for loop. Here's a for loop, so we're utilizing that. Um, let's pass in this guy here for the filtered array. It should return, okay, this one, sh this one's not correct. Amy, Beth, Sam, Dave, Sean, Peter, Peter, Amy, Beth, Sam. This one should return only Amy, Beth, Sam. Let's see here. Let's console.log array at i. Oh, we might have this right. I've actually made a mistake here. What I need to do here is write filtered array. Amy, Beth, Sam. Okay, so we are passing this one. I just made a mistake and did not put the name of the function in there. And therefore we were just returning the thing. And then if I were to pass this guy in here, We've got flutes and four. So it looks like this is right. So what's going on here? If we run the test, I bet they'll pass. Okay, so just one more time and to run through what's going on here. We're going through, um, I'm gonna make, read this out. I'll line it up like this and I think this will make it make more sense. Okay, so we're running filtered array and in, a, in there we're passing in this array. That is equal to this guy. That's what this one will be passed in as a parameter. And then what we're doing is iterating through. That's what this does. This gives us zero, one, two. That's where it goes. Array.length is equal to the three here. So while i is less than three, i is zero, while i is less than three, and then i plus plus. So initially, um, i is equal to zero, and zero, and then or the array at position zero is trumpets and two. And we say, if the index of two is equal to negative one. Well, here it's not going to be equal to negative one. It's going to be one. And therefore we're going to skip this step. And then we're going to come back and then i is going to be equal to one because it's incremented. And because i, because one is less than three, we're going to come here, array at position one, which will be here, flutes, dot index of the element, and the element is two, because two is not, and the index of this array, the um, index of value will be negative one. So this evaluates to true. And then therefore we push in to the new array, the flutes and four. And then we come back down. And now index is equal to two, the number two. And then here, if array at position two, so that's the saxophones. If the index of the element is equal to negative one, well, it's not negative one, it's going to be equal to uh, positive one because this is the zeroth position and this is the um, second position. And the second position in computer in, with zero counting is position one. So one is not equal to negative one. And therefore we skip this step. Now um, index is equal to three, but three is not less than the length. And therefore we break out of the loop. And then we have our new array has been Added, we've added this guy, but not the other two. And so we return the new array. And that's why when we console log this, we just get this guy as the feedback. Anyways, hope that helps you guys. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next lesson.